everyone. This is your host, Maragal, and we are on part three in the series called Why I Left Biblical Judaism. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and the like button to help the channel out. Now back with the program. Micaiah, for example, says, Who would entice Ahab that he will fall in Ramoth Gilead? And the angels came forth from one said this, one said that. Finally, one came forth and... Uh, this is like 1 Kings 22, 21, somewhere around there. It says, I'll entice Ahab. And the Lord says, by what means? And he says, I'll be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He says, go and you'll succeed. And so, kind of like that, you know. So, but in the polytheism days, it's not angels. It's deities. <clears throat> like demigods. The sons of El. Sons and daughters of El. And so one of them is Baal. And so when you un now understand that monotheism is new, starting around 390, you can say, they were never going astray after Baal. That was their normal practice. And because they already, you know, the 390 BCE people knew about the Baal places of worship, and they wanted their deity became L and L alone um, morphed into YHWH you know um, the southern the southern deity came on the scene uh, uh, like around 800 BC like Yehoa or Yahweh you know, modern scholars call but YHWH came on the scene maybe around 900 and something anyway he morphed into L like basically replaces L or they're one the same eventually not that they originally were and so now this YHWH character is now you know the king of you know god of gods father of gods and um and he is now married to Ashira, you know, the wife of El. And so El is basically replaced or goes hand in hand be being the same guy where originally they weren't. El Yehoah is like some other deity of a different group of people. And uh, so it's interesting. But uh, uh, I'll give you an example where... Didact, you know, it's talking about the assembly of the heavens, you know, and the Genesis. So there's some things being twisted, and you know, besides the Babylonian myths, um, so it's kind of a collage of stuff going on. Uh, another thing is where they had modified uh, of uh, 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 stories to promote a monotheistic thing. Okay, Baal is a son of El. A, a god, a god of the sea, like Poseidon, is uh, you know, but in in Canaanite mythology. A guy named Yom. Well, he has either a pet or a servant. It's basically a seven-headed sea creature, of some kind dragon per se, but it's a sea creature. And his name is Lotan. Okay, Lotan goes and fights Baal or something, but Baal kills him. And so, what they did, they regurgitated it instead of, because they're trying to promote a monotheism, they delete Baal out of the story and put YHWH in there. And uh, so, they put YHWH in there and changed Lotan. You still have the root lettering L T N they changed Lotan into Leviathan. Okay? And so the Lord destroys Leviathan the sea creature. That's why in Genesis you I'm not Genesis, but um yeah uh, Job. You know when the Lord is talking to Job, can you put a a hook in Leviathan's mouth? You know, this is not a genuine sea creature. <clears throat> It's actually a mythology creature, you know, and uh, it's a mythology creature, and his real name is Lotan, not Leviathan. 
So it's, you see this junk, and it's like, dude, I just so wish they left it alone because it's so much better, rich culture if you just left it alone. You know, and versus this fake monotheism stuff, you know, and it's this is so fake, you know. Then it still goes off into uh, it's funny around the year 1000, there is a Jewish rabbi, sage, elder named Maimonides, and he out of the blue, now doesn't, I don't think I've read anywhere. Uh, in this theology existed before this but I talked to Rabbi Skoback back in the day blah 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 I debated him big time and I was like you are so against scripture you know and I'm biblical orthodox and he's rabbinical orthodox Hasidic pretty much and he goes God has no image you know I'm like Hashem has no image I'm like well, you must be ignoring your own book. He goes, well, my mind, he's t taught that God was has no image, you know. And I'm like, where does my mind get this idea from? Because all over our scripture, God has, he looks like a human being, just a super human being, a heavenly human being. That's why we're made in his image. You know, it's like... He walked in the cool of the day in the garden. He rough, ruffled up the leaves or something and startled Adam and Eve. And they took off and run because they were naked, you know. So he apparently had feet to walk with, you know. Or like the three visitors of Abraham, you know. You had two of them or end up being angels and went to go save, get Lot out of there. And the other one stayed behind, you know, talked with Abraham, which that was the Lord. You know, so here he is. And then what else? Uh, you have Mikai, the guy I just talked about in like 1 Kings 21, 22 in there somewhere. You know, he says, uh, Behold, I saw the Lord, blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, some on this side, some on that side, and sitting on his throne. So he sees them. You know, or like Moses, you know, this is a kind of contradiction with the Moses story. It's kind of goofy. You know, because uh, you could tell it was written 590 versus the original Isaiah, you know, in Hezekiah's time, pre-Babylonian time. You know, because in Isaiah 6, Isaiah claims he sees him sitting on the throne. There's seraphim around. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And, you know, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Where the Torah authors of 390-ish said he can't you know everybody's seeing his face you know but moses can't see his face all of a sudden you know it's like you can see my back but you can't see my face where isaiah sees his face ezekiel sees his face daniel supposedly sees his face so now what's going on here you know so it's <laughs> so you have all and they all describe god as a human figure so where in the world is my mind he's getting his ideas from he has you know he has no image and uh so here's the truth of the matter uh Maimonides lived, I think, in Cairo, Egypt, in the year 1000-ish, around there. Well, Cairo, Egypt, was ruled by Muslims, and they teach God has no image. So there's your influence right there. <clears throat> so, Hasidic Judaism takes after Islam when it comes to that. Not their own book. So... Why well, is a biblical Jew? Uh, that's what I bleed. He has an image. If he were to get in a rocket ship, go past all the galaxies and the stars, and go zip past the water dome, he's up there somewhere. Somewhere. And, um, so. <laughs> but, of course, prophets could get there just like that in a vision. So. Uh, and, uh, of course, at that time, I was always hoping for that. But that never happened. But anyway, but, uh, so I had to, uh, so, me personally, I don't believe in the Bible L no more, but I will tell you this, uh, someone is out there, to a point, okay, because 
It's not no God of the gaps type deal. You know, I believe in science. I believe in the evolution. I don't believe in the resurrection anymore. You know, when I'm dead, I'm gone. That's it. Facts are right in the ground. You can find a dead human that's been in the ground for three million years. So these fools saying, the end is coming real soon. Mm -mm. Ain't coming soon for them. And so the sun will burn out. We'll be no more. But regardless of all that, there still seems to be something out there. Because I myself, in the day, I lay hands on people. In the name of El, the only God I serve at that time. And uh, one lady couldn't see far away, couldn't see probably past, you know, this room right here. She told me, like, can't see past 10 feet. Everything is blurred out after that. So after three days of praying off and on, she went outside into the yard and she realized she could see right down the street. She wrote me, this is 20 years ago, back in 2004, almost 20 years ago. She wrote me, I don't know, six months ago-ish. She says, you know, my vision is still great. And she goes, I have better than 2020 vision. And uh, so that was pretty cool. That was real cool. So and that, that's doctor proven right there. Another one is uh, no malarkey on that one. Another one is a lady named Wanda in Redlands, well, was it Redlands? Island, California. Laid hands on her, and she went, jumped up like that, and she slammed on the ground. And I put my hand right here. And uh, didn't touch her, just kind of, you can see, kind of that close. And I uh, said, back be straight. And I commanded it. And then she went, like that, and she slammed on the ground. Ooh, she thought I pushed her down. And that's not a joke. <laughs> so I didn't touch you. <laughs> I did not touch you. But she got with me about two weeks later ish. She says, Yeah, I visit. This is her story. I don't know if it's true or not. This is her. So, <clears throat> and uh, I just have to take her word for it. But the other one's confirmed. I know that. So she said, Yeah, I visited the doctor. This is like a verbatim, close to verbatim quote. Yeah, I visited my doctor. She said, Yeah. Uh, he said I grew half an inch and my back is straight. So, so this is why I know, even though I don't believe in the Hebraic image L, it's kind of more like Star Wars to me now, to a point. You know, may the force be with you. Can't explain. There's no male, female gender on anything. Kind of like the Mamanis to a certain degree. You know, but like I said, but lack of better words and just wanting to name this being or whatever you want to call it, presence, giving it it or whatever it is a name. I call this something L, just because I'm familiar with it, and. It seems to be like I've been guided the whole entire time, you know, to get me this far. To pull me out of stuff. You know, even these guys, you know, s truth seems to be the reality. So, real truth should be your walk, you know. Like, you know, you look at the Torah and you people want to get their morals from the Torah. The morals of the Torah suck. They really suck. Why? I'll give you three examples. Three. I think at least two. <laughs> I think I might just lost them the moment I said that. Okay, here's why some of the morals of the Bible suck. Uh, now, some people will defend it. I'm not going to defend it. I'm just going to go along with it. Okay? One is the Bible point blank says... Uh, the slavery is totally allowed, condoned, and uh, practiced. Okay? That's it. When I was Jewish Orthodox, I believed that. Not here in America, no. It's not allowed to be done. <clears throat> but, if it was in a society that would be allowed to be done, I would go along with it. That's how I was, that's how I was thinking. However, here's my big however. Uh, the Bible says... 
if you go not the Canaanite like okay granted I have to backtrack for a minute go back in that mindset we were redeemed out of Egyptian slavery yet we could still have slaves ourselves because all societies at that time had slaves but let me get back to that wavelength when we went to Canaan uh, everybody was under the ban there right according to the Torah According to the Torah, everybody in Canaan had to be genocided out. All of them. You know, old men, women, children, didn't matter who it was. And so, however, if we went to war with, after we got in the land or something, went to war with a group and we take captives, we can make them into our slaves. And those people could be, my kids could inherit those slaves. So I didn't have a problem with that at that time, you know, but I would, if I were to put myself back in those shoes again, I would say I would never take a captive as a slave. There's different ones. Now, people have technical terms. One would be the other kind where you're poor and you sell yourself to work for somebody so you can survive and make it. Those are the kind I would personally take. Not the kind where you capture somebody because they don't want to be there. They want to be set free, go back home, so you're going to always have trouble with them. So, but the other ones who volunteer to be under your, uh, under your roof so that they su could survive, uh, those are the, that's just like, like a normal worker, you know, but why would you beat them? I mean, you want to beat them. You know, there's a rule to beat them. You know, you, or you're allowed to if you want to. But uh, no point in beating them. It's a volunteer deal. But slavery is allowed. So I don't condone it. I'm just saying in, the mi in my mindset back then, yeah, I condone it's allowed. Same with poly polygamy, things like that. And, okay, that's one, one aspect. Slavery is wrong. So, there's your morality. And Christian dome is the same problem. Paul doesn't condemn it. Jesus doesn't condemn it. In fact, Philemon, the book of Philemon, is talking about a servant running away, a slave running away. He, Paul never says, uh, you know, uh, the Lord says slavery is wrong. Just let him go, dude. And uh, you shouldn't be having slaves, no way. And, uh, you know, it's just not there. Because everybody was doing it. <clears throat> and uh, that was just the, it was wrong. So anyway, it doesn't enter into the mind that it's wrong. Okay? The other one is, um, keeping your word, you know, like the commandment is, uh, um, do not use the Lord's name in vain. A lot of people think that it has to do with cussing or swearing, you know. As in cussing and swearing. Uh, but the reality is that's talking about vows, oaths, and swearing. Like, you know, like when the president puts his hand on the Bible, he swears to uphold the Constitution, blah, blah, blah. It's referring to that. And so, Scripture in its moral lesson uh, will allow human sacrifice to take place, like Jephthah. What the story is in the book of Judges somewhere. And it's like this guy named Jephthah. Uh, he's about to go to war, or whatever he's, yeah, at war. And, uh, and he says, the first thing that come out of my house, I'll sacrifice to the Lord. And so, you know, people have pets in their yard, you know, or your house, maybe goats and sheep or whatever, so maybe that's what his thought, so guess what? Now he says this in, you know, says this to the Lord, of course. So when he comes back, who comes out of the house the first to greet him? It was his virgin daughter. So, <laughs> to keep his word, he sacrifices his daughter as a human sacrifice. And no one says nothing. You know, because he said a vow. And uh, so that's that so-called morality. Another one is if a, a man rapes a woman, 
that is a virgin. Um, he, oh, I might put this on the screen. Uh, he is supposed to marry that woman and cannot put her away all the days of her life. She is a permanent wife to that guy. Well, gee, that's just great for the woman, you know, to be married to your rapist. What kind of junk is that? You know, there's stuff like that all the time. So the Bible, getting your morality from the Bible, is not exactly the best thing to do, okay? And what about, you know, the superstition? You're killing these animals to give daily offerings, like one in the morning, one in the evening, or at tabernacle feast you have 13 like bulls and as the days go on you go down to 12 and 11 and 10 9 8 blah 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 so you're because in the old because sacrifices are is a superstition from way back in the day long before Israel was established and we just kind of adopted it you know just automatically because everybody was doing it you know I'm your I'm your son, my dad did it, so you're just following the technique you get into the warp mentality. And so, Judaism, or Jews, or the Jewish people are no different. They, you know, came from the Canaanites, and so we just kind of took it on to ourselves for our deity. And even Jesus, the so called Messiah, is doing it himself, you know, and uh, with participating with Passover. So, because in the old thinking, there is a deity up there. And there's no way for me to get up there. I don't have a plane or a rocket. So I want him to uh, smell this great barbecue. Because who doesn't like a great steak on the barbecue? It smells great. So you offer, you kill this animal just to burn it. <clears throat> this poor little animal just to burn it. So this deity could smell a great steak. Come on, bro. So, I mean, it's pathetic. It's so full of superstition. You need to get past all that. So, it's kind of funny. I want to talk about Christian Dome just for a brief, brief sec. Brief sec. More water. You know, I turn my back on the Messiah concept. Is one thing, you know. It's like, well, Christian, Christian's got a problem there. Does uh, Messiah's not even prophesied about, except for in bluntly that is, except for in Daniel. And Daniel is a false books, false prophecy book. And there's a lot of false prophecy books, like Ezekiel, like uh, you know the so-called Third Temple, or it's actually supposed to be the Second Temple, and it didn't turn out that way. So that one has to be thrown out. So anyway, then when you come to find out. Like in my learning, come to find out that the Passover never even existed. Oh, Christians have it really bad now. Why? Because according to Paul, in one of the books, I'll put it right here, he says, Jesus is our Passover offering to who sacrificed himself for us. Making atonement, basically. And I was like... There was not even be there was not even a Passover to begin with, so I guess Jesus is not your Passover lamb. <laughs> so oh my god, they're more lost than Jewish folks. And uh anyway. And then they morphed into Jesus God, so they're just worshiping a man who couldn't keep his own word, right? Ooh, I yeah, just blaspheme somebody, I'm sorry do that what do I mean by that precisely okay Jesus in Matthew somewhere 16 or 19 I don't know I have to look it up anyway he says not everyone standing here and that is the people in front of them well taste death and before they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven well guess what that whole generation died out and uh, and he didn't come back and also kind of like the words being put in this so-called Daniel's mouth you know because the Messiah was supposed to come before 
uh, the Romans took over. Uh, Matthew 24 is putting words in the mouth of Jesus because if you look at that, it's dead on prophecy, dead on perfect prophecy. But what's the time frame, okay? Jesus just said, not, not all of you will, will taste death or see death before I come back. Matthew 24 is the lead up you know, it's words put in the mouth of Jesus here. You see the temple in 70 A.D. being destroyed and the armies coming against it. And that's basically, so the author is after, after the destruction of the temple. So he's hoping the Messiah will come right after that. So he puts it right in there in verse 29 of Matthew 24, 24, 29. Uh, immediately after the distress of those days, a sign of the Son of Man will appear. And so that never happened at 70 AD, especially not immediately. And here we are 2,000 years later, okay? Jesus ain't coming back, folks. I don't care what you have to say. <clears throat> Paul told the Corinthians, don't marry each other because the time is short. Really? And that whole generation would have died out by being eunuchs. Okay, if they took that advice, literally, there'd be no Christians left, none. They would all died out. Okay, even the married people stay as I am, basically single, and uh, because the time is short. Yep, ain't happened. Never happened. Or Revelation, when he's telling one of the seven churches, he says. Uh, hold on just a little. I'm paraphrasing. Hold on just a little longer. And uh, my reward is, is uh, whatever it says. It's, uh, uh, it's the, you know, I'm coming quickly. That's what it is. Uh, hold on, because I'm coming quickly with a reward or something like that. Well, that whole church doesn't exist no more. The whole city is wiped out. It's like just an archaeological dig now. So, it's a, you got to stop believing in this stuff, dude. You know, if you want to take the uh, the ethic commandments, not all cultures, every single one, the ones where there's, you know, anybody with a family, you know, teaches don't hurt your brother or sister, you know, don't hurt your pets, you know, you know, you love your pets and stuff like that. Don't taint your surroundings, you know, don't be, you know, it's like, okay, why don't taint your surroundings? If you go to the bathroom, you're right in the middle of your floor, you're probably going to catch some disease over time or get sick. <clears throat> so if you have roaches flying everywhere all over the place, you know, and they go to the bathroom, you know, there's certain things you want to live by. But, uh, so yeah, the Torah, uh, departing from the four things I said, you know, uh, human sacrifice, uh, um, uh, I just said slavery, uh, rape, junk, and, uh, whatever. But other things, you know, like any other penal code, not all penal codes are great. Like, say, for example, in American law, you're allowed to commit abortion that doesn't mean everybody does abortion but you're allowed to do it so it's like slavery yeah you're allowed to have slaves in in the jewish bible even in the new testament you're allowed to have slaves uh that doesn't mean you know you do it <clears throat> but uh so all that you know it's like an american law yeah you're allowed to have abortion but that doesn't mean everybody does it because they see it's wrong and uh so just because it's allowed doesn't mean it's right. So, but there's other things that are point blank good. You know, have just weights and balances, like in uh, Leviticus 19. You know, where would that apply? Like at the store, when you see uh, so much tomatoes for a pound equals that much. So if you put like 10 pounds on the thing, you see it's 10 pounds, you know, like that, and. Uh, on this particular scale and you know it's going to be this price like say it's a dollar a pound all of a sudden you're like you're not paying attention and all of a sudden you go to the ringer and it's it's actually like uh, uh, eight pounds there 
and uh, and you're still paying ten bucks, and you're like, oh, I just got ripped off, and you don't know it till you get home, <clears throat> and uh, uh, or like uh, you know scales, like when you go to a, a place where they like a semi truck when they go on scales, you know things like that, or a, a landfill, you know they put you on scales or something, or the gas station by liquid measure, so. Anyway, um, but that's it, you know, so there's some things, you know, like tattoos, tattoos in the Bible are wrong, not a problem with that, you should be at freedom to do what you want, it's not for everybody, but, you know, but, uh, there's no sin in that, and, uh, in the Bible it's a sin, but in reality, no, there's no, uh, sin is more theft, genuine theft. Uh, sin may not spiritual sin or stain but it does taint your name who you are you know you're a meth head you know it taints your name why would you taint your name you're a thief people know you as a thief that taints your name it's a blemish on you uh, if you're a murderer you know that taints you and you, you hurt somebody well, you know blah 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 but I just didn't say thief you know it, you know, you become a thief, you know, murderer, kidnapper, all these things, you know. So, anyway, that's my wrap up today, and this is why I left biblical Judaism. That's a biblical Judaism. It would be a thousand million times worse if it was rabbinical, because they get into la la land stuff. <clears throat> they can't keep keep the text straight. I mean, their oral traditions. Uh, you know, totally contradict the biblical text, so and you can't go for that. So that's why I could never get into it. I mean, I I walked over like 26 years in a Orthodox lifestyles. You know, and I mean, it was like I'm out. And uh, that's like it's focus. And so I learned my I I educated myself out of it. So, because I didn't want to be brainwashed by people, I want to confirm stuff, and um, couldn't be confirmed. All right, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry for this super long video, and hopefully I can tack it all on uh, on um, YouTube. <laughs> all right, <laughs> bye.